about 850 million people suffer from chronic hunger and undernourishment the world over. Despite the fact that the world food production is sufficient to feed the entire global population. There are various perceptible and a few not so perceptible drivers as to why decision makers choose to promote and spend millions of public money on genetically engineered seeds and agrochemical subsidies over economical, ecological and sustainable models of agriculture. Many of us have been fought for oil. If one has a sense of the power and the international politics associated with controlling petrol and nuclear energy, it would not be difficult to imagine the supremacy that controlling world food brings. Along with the health hazards, ecological risks, environmental damage and the associated ethical questions, the debate regarding commercialization and the environmental release of genetically engineered crops must be viewed in the light of highly worrisome practices of patenting of seeds, the monopolization of public resources in the hands of a few corporate houses, international food trade politics, not to ignore the personal benefits of the officials and governments backing and approving these crops. The power associated with controlling world food, its cultivation and its trade is colossal. Trade deals that necessitate food imports to the detriment of the cultivators in the poor countries set off a vicious cycle of hunger, dependence and slavery. In a world where there is massive resistance in the developed countries against GM crops, the multi-billion populace of the Indian subcontinent is a mouth-watering market for the biotech companies. The danger is looming large and GM crops are being forced on the developing nations. Recently, Bangladesh, with whom India shares a very long and porous border, approved commercial cultivation of Bt brinjal amidst widespread public protests locally and internationally. The approval of Bt cotton is also anticipated. Recently in India, the government of Maharashtra issued an NOC for the field trials of 15 food crops. These developments internationally are dangerous and very troubling. We must act before it is too late. I call out for a global movement to declare safe food and drinking water a fundamental human right. If you think that easy access to safe and nutritious food and safe potable water must be a fundamental human right, then please, please share and broadcast this message.